Welcome back guys. In this video we'll be talking about DNA shuffling. Now there are different aspects of DNA shuffling and they have different uh, rules and different regulations and different way to do that. But in the way I'm talking about DNA shuffling in this video is a uh, uh, in vitro process of generating mutations in your lab in just kind of one to one hour to two hour. It's just like a very kind of similar reaction with PCR but slightly varying in the process. We'll be talking about that. So very similar to P PCR, a process of generating many variety of a same type of gene using the homologous genes, right? And using simple temperature variations. Now this DNA suffering is very, very important because we can use this DNA shuff shuffling process to generate different type of vaccines we can use it to generate uh, antivirals antiviral medicines or also we need uh, we can use it to produce many different variety of uh, proteins many different variety of proteins uh, slash enzymes obviously so enzymes are proteins so we can produce many different variety of enzymes uh, having some extra function or some better function or or some better what we can say activity okay so these are the uses of DNA shuffling in a sense DNA shuffling means we are creating artificial mutations in vitro okay now how we can achieve this artificial mutation in vitro? For example, let us take one simple example and that is the production of interleukin type 1. So IL-1 protein which is required for chemical signaling process in our uh, immunology system or immune system. We all know that. Now interleukin 1 is very much important to prevent the viral infections. So it is acting as an antiviral agent. So if you can produce more amount of interleukin 1 it will be very much helpful for treating the, the viral diseases, right? So we want to generate more amount of interleukin-1. And for that, let's say this is a gene for our interleukin production. So this is a DNA, it is having the gene for our interleukin production somewhere there in between this gene. Now what we can do here, we can simply, so if double-stranded DNA is there, what we can do here, Normally, let's say this is the interleukin 1 producing gene. There is another, there are another genes uh, are there which are also producing interleukin 1's slight variations of those genes and some homologous genes of this interleukin 1. So we choose those homologous genes along with the gene of our interest, right? And remember, all of those homologous genes, though they are termed as homologous, that means most of their regions are kind of similar, but they are not the same. Homologous genes are having similar regions, but not the same region. So they might have some similarity, but not everything same. So in this case, we'll choose some amount of those homologous gene, let's say this red one, and we also take this blue one. And let's work with this three only. So we take this three, right? We are trying to produce here the interleukin one. That's our goal. Now in this case, using this three homologous gene, in vitro condition, we want to create a match-mismatch game, right? Using simple temperature variations. Because we know that DNA is having a kind of hybridization and unhybridization process. So we can hybridize them, we can uh, simply uh, anneal them, reanneal them. Uh, so different things can be done here. So you simply can uh, simply can separate this DNA strands using heat then we can allow some cool temperature to hybridization of DNA strands. Now normally what we do in this case we simply in lab we put all these homologous DNA sequences in vitro in a small tube in those PCR tube or, uh, or simply Eppendorf. Now by putting them we, we treat them using uh, some chemical agent we treat them using an enzyme called DNAs1 right so once we use here the dna's one enzyme here dna's one enzyme now dna's one will cleave them from different places for example it is cleaving them from here cleaving them for here and for here and so on so it is cleaving them from different regions so ultimately what we end up with we end up with many different small pieces so let me draw the small pieces let's say this is 
This is. So we end up with many small pieces of the DNA in that in vitro condition after the treatment of DNA is one. So after this, what we'll do? We simply increase the temperature of the environment. Now, as we're increasing the temperature, so this is the first thing that we do. So let me write. This is the first thing. Now the second thing here is increasing the temperature. Increment of the temperature is there. So as we are increasing the temperature, they start to come out, right? The strands start to come out from each other, right? So denaturation will be obtained. So DNA denaturation will be observed in that case. So once we see the denaturation, that means we will be getting small black segments like this. We will be getting uh, blue segments. Uh, like this and also we'll be getting these red segments like that right so we'll be getting many different segments like this uh, because of this denaturation process right so once we get this pile of segments then what we do we simply allow this temperature to cool down a little bit so we slowly reduce the temperature to a hybridization temperature so that DNA strands can be hybridized with each other right so in this case after this temperature cools down and they reanneal with themselves so first denaturation of the dna is done then reannealing of the temperature similar like the pcr reaction because remember in pcr reaction what we do we simply in using the uh, thermostat what we will do using that thermocycler machine not stat thermocycler machine we simply increase the temperature to denature the DNA strands, then we cool down the temperature for the reannealing of the DNA strands, right? And we use a primer for the amplification process because what polymerase we use, that is a thermostable polymerase, but still it cannot start the polymerization process on its own. It requires a 3' hydroxyl. For that purpose, we use the primer, the forward primer and the backward primer for two different strands, right? Now, in this case, what we do, in this case, we also use this temperature variations, but we do not require any primer for the annealing because ultimately many different segments are generated. So when we give the temperature for them to cool down in this case, in this way, what it does actually, it's, it start to hybridize. Now this hybridization it's not always that black with hybridize with black, black can hybridize with red, black can hybridize with blue, red can hybridize with blue. So this hybridization process, match, mismatch, many things start to occur. Depending upon the complementarity of the sequence, hybridization can take place. Now remember, this is coming from one particular organism. We want this gene. These are homologous type of genes, but not according the effective interleukin 1. But we are using all of them for to produce a mix mixture of the gene, a mixture of DNA sequence that is doing a better job, that is producing more interleukin 1 or more effective interleukin 1. So that is our goal. That's why we are doing the experiment in vitro. We are matching everything, try to make a mix and hodgepodge kind of thing so that something generates really essential. So what is going on here? We will be getting different kind of joint. We will be getting black with black joints. We will be getting black with not exact joint can be possible. Let's say, sorry. Yeah, so black with red, suppose this is kind of joint that we observed here or we can get a joint like this with a blue one. So as we are getting uh, different strands like that, remember if like this, this hybridization condition, if there is any hydroxyl placed in the 3' prime, hydroxyl is free. In that case, that 3' prime hydroxyl is acting as the primer. Remember, uh, in PCR, we use the forward and reverse primers, but in this case, we don't want, we don't require those primer because we are having 3' prime hydroxyl. Not all of them will give us 3' prime hydroxyl because some of them may have this, uh, the condition like that. Let's say uh, this is the 5' prime. So in that case, it won't be elongated, right, anymore. So in this case, it won't be elongated. But in these two cases, the sequence can be elongated. So the sequence here can be elongated. Now once after the temperature is cooling down, we also add 
the DNTPs into the medium along with the DNA polymerase because that's required, right? So you cool down the temperature, we add DNTPs and DNA polymerase and they'll start to elongate this region, remember? Elongated there. Similarly, this red strand is also elongated here, right? Strand elongation is possible. So in this way, again denaturation will be there. So remember, we start with a very small sequence using the cut of DN DNAs1. After that, we cool it down, we add polymerase, DNTPs, elongation is there. So slightly, our gene sequences are getting elongated, right? Once the sequences are elongated, then we again separate them by increasing the heat. Then again, cool down the temperature for annealing or hybridization of the DNA. And again, after this match, mismatch, different kinds of hybridization, again, there will be re-annealing process, repolymerization process from the 3' prime hydroxyl end using those strands as a primer to elaborate or, and to polymerize the strand. Then again, we produce larger. So once we are going from this starting point by cleaving with DNAs1 towards this hybridization and polymerization process, what is going on that our DNA sequence is getting getting li slightly longer, longer. So ultimately after many cycles like 20 to 30 cycles of this process, 20 to 30 cycles of this process, we ultimately end up with some kind of mosaic DNA sequence like this. For example, here it says, let's say this, so we end up with different type of mosaic sequences, for example, let's say this. For example, this is the mosaic sequence we got. So similarly, we get many different mosaic type of sequence. Now, we call it mosaic because the sequence that we get here is not coming from one type of gene because we take three different types of gene. Now, ultimately, all of those type of or strands from those genes are mixed. Now, as the strands from the genes are mixed, the codons are also being changed. Now, that is what we want. We want to create some artificial mutation and some artificial evolution actually not only mutation but in broad scale of mutation and such kind of evolution now in eukaryotic system evolution is very 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 slow right so it, it will took a very large time to get a mutation uh, to get some evolu evolve, uh, evolution of a particular gene but in this case we can achieve that a kind of two to three hours in lab now once we achieve this kind of complete set of DNAs, large set of DNAs. Then what we want to do, we want to express those genes. We, uh, we transcribe those genes in vitro transcription process, then in vitro translation, and finally, we get the product. Now, we get many variety of this mosaic DNA. Now, those, the, then the product we'll get, some, mm, suppose we get a whole population of these mixed gene products. Now, among, among those mixed genes, 90% are non-functional. 90% of them are producing nothing, just rubbish. Now, we take rest of the 10% and among them, some of them are producing interleukins that are just like the previous one, activity is just like the previous one. We don't want that thing. Now, you can find a very fine, very small percentage of those genes that, is, that are producing better quality of your product, better quality of interleukin 1. More interleukin 1 expression is there. So, we'll choose that particular type of gene and we sequence that gene to get the desired uh, to, uh, to get the idea of what genes are, what, what uh, is the codon base is there. Then we create that artificially, then we amplify that using PCR, then we can amplify that particular gene using PCR, and we can incorporate it into, the, into uh, some organism, and then try to express that by that organism, and then we can get our desired product. Now, this is the way to understand, to increase some particular type of proteins like enzymes, the activity of enzyme will be enhanced or sometimes the effective molecules like interleukin 1 for acting against virus and also sometimes we use it to produce different types of vaccines. So this is a blessing for molecular biologists nowadays. DNA shifting can be used for many purpose to produce a very better quality product, right? And this is the way to do this in very basic process, right? So that's it guys. Thank you.